we're going to do a series of study in 1 Corinthians. So we're going to take time just to go through chapter by chapter. Now, the fact of the matter is he's writing this episode in order to address a lot of problems in the Corinthian church. Look at how he begins. He doesn't start by grumbling. Oh, you Corinthians. You know, no. He starts out by giving thanks for the things God has done in their lives. I want to emphasize this point here that although Paul is actually getting ready to address all the mess that is happening in the Corinthian church, he begins by giving thanks. I know we have to talk to God about the issues, but before you get to it, thank him for the things he has already done. That's what Paul is doing here. So after he has done that, he gets right down to business. Verses 10 to 17. The next section, which is a call to unity. The first issue Paul is addressing with the Corinthian church is the issue of unity. And say, brethren, this is what I want. This is what God desires. This is what Jesus desires for you. As a community of people, we should be a people who speak the same thing. There should be no division. The word division simply means tearing apart. There should be no divisions amongst us. We should be perfectly joined together. It's, it's a medical term there. When, when it's talking about reference, referring to a, when a bone is broken, it had to be put back together. So when it's put back together, it has to be perfectly joined together. So, so I want you to be like that. I want, we should be perfectly joined together. We should be of the same mind, perceiving and understanding, feeling, judging, determining things the same way. And he says of same judgment, meaning same view or opinion. So this is what we should be like. Yeah, what was causing divisions uh, in, the, in the church? People were taking sides. Right? I'm a Paul. I'm a Apollos. I belong to Peter. It's not who God used. Thank God he will use different people. But our identity is not in them. What's the main thing? The main thing is the gospel. It says, Christ didn't send me to baptize, but he sent me to preach the gospel. And what is the gospel? He says there in verse 17. It's the message about the cross of Christ. Do you and I must understand that the gospel, the power of the gospel is inherent in the message of the cross. People don't get saved because you had a brilliant presentation. People get saved because the power is in the message of the cross. You see, when you share the message of the cross, you are actually administering the power of God to somebody. The world, through wisdom, did not know God. That means through the wisdom of this world, you cannot comprehend and understand God. It comes through the enlightening of the Holy Spirit. We have only one message. We have the same message to the Jews and the Greeks. We have the same message to those who are seeking signs and those who want something intellectual. Just one message. It's the message of the cross. So don't be ashamed of the gospel. Stay with this. This is the core. The gospel. The message of the cross of Christ. Amen? Then the last part. He just says, okay, I want you to understand God's calling. So he's saying, I want you to understand something about how God works. He says, God intentionally takes the weak things of the world. He takes the foolish things of the world. He takes the base things, the valueless things, the unvalued, devalued, non-valued things of this world. He takes things that don't even exist. And by his work, he displays his wisdom and power. Amen? So that no one could glory Everyone has to say, it is the work of God. Now, this is such an important truth. To know that in Christ, we are complete. That in Christ, we have everything to become what God wants us to become. We have it. That means, the three S's. Our search for significance, security, and self-worth. Comes from here. From your being in Christ. 